Hey everyone, Travis Richmond here, and welcome to my desk at Ripple Training. I had the A2 Mini Pro out again this morning, and Steve and I thought it would be a good idea to do another video on it. Specifically on working with macros, the upstream downstream key, and the media player. Now, if you're not familiar with the terms upstream and downstream keys, I suggest you check out one of my previous A10 videos on that subject, and I'll post a link for that in the description below. But really what I want to get at with the macros is working with the media player. Now, if you're working with an A10 like mine, one of the smaller models, that would be the A10 Mini, the A10 Mini Pro, or the Pro ISO, you get one media player. If you're working with the A10 Mini Extreme, you get two. But again, with a smaller model like this, you only have one media player. Now that can be challenging when going from the upstream to the downstream key. If you're using a different graphic, you have to fade down one select your different still in the media player, and then fade up the other one. That's a lot of clicking. So let's see if we can make this a little bit easier with macros. So we'll jump into the ATEM software control app on my iMac. So here we are in the ATEM software control. And if I choose macros from the menu here and open up our macro window, we get a floating window with two sections, create and run. Now I'm gonna create a really basic macro just to get across the basic concept, and that is, only the things you change or click on will be recorded. Not the state of the app, just the things you change. So with that, I'll click this plus button. I'll name the new macro demo. And what I'm gonna do is I'll click on cam two, because even though it's already chosen, again, it's not recording the state. I have to actually set it for it to be recorded by the macro. So I'll select cam two for program, cam two for preview, and then I'm gonna leave everything else as is. And notice I have background true chosen, I have mix, my downstream key is off, great. So I'm gonna end the recording, and there it is. So now, let's change some of these things up. I'll choose bars, I'll change preview to cam four, I'll change my transition style to dip, I'll enable the key for next transition, and maybe I'll, I'll enable tie for my downstream key. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I run the demo macro. When I created this macro, remember, I only clicked on cam two for program and preview. So I'll select in the run section, select the demo macro, and click this play button right here to run it. Okay, great. So notice the things that I changed or I set cam two for program and for preview have been set properly. But over here, notice my transition style didn't go to mix. My key one is still on and tie for downstream key one is on because even though those things were set the way I wanted them to be set when I recorded the macro, because I didn't click on them, they weren't included in the macro. So just remember that whatever you want the macro to do, you need to actually click it in order for it to be recorded in the macro. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and delete this demo. And to get an idea of what it is I want to accomplish, I'm gonna jump into my media page, and you'll see here that I have two PNGs loaded into the media page. I have a large Ripple logo and then a small lower third. So what I want to happen is create a startup macro. It's going to create, like when I'm getting ready for my show, I click this macro and it's gonna set up everything for me. So let's create that one right now. So I'm gonna click the plus button here. I'm gonna call this Startup, click record. And as before, I want camera two for program. I want camera two for preview. I want key one for next transition to be on. I want that upstream key to be turned on. I want a mixed transition style. I'm gonna turn off my downstream key. Also, just in case, I wanna make sure this is off but I need to click through it to make sure that it gets turned off when I run this macro. So I'm gonna turn it on, but then I'm gonna turn it back off. So it's saving this state. This macro is saying, when you run this macro, this thing's off. And then in my media player, I'm gonna to switch to still one. And so now you'll see on my camera feed here, I have this nice big Ripple Training logo in front of my face. Okay, great. So I think that's where I want everything to be. So I'll end the recording. There's our new macro and it's in the run section. So let's set all this stuff back into disarray. 
Okay, so I've changed everything up. So now let's run the macro. So I'll select it and click the play button. Perfect. My cam twos are set in program and preview. My keys turned on. It's on air and key one is selected for next transition. My transition style is mix and my downstream key is turned off. Oh, and also you'll notice that we're still using the retro blue lobster still. Okay, great. So now what I want to happen is I want this logo that you're seeing to fade off and then I want the lower third to fade up. And to do that, let's create a new macro. I'm going to call it key switch. Great. And click record. All right. And now what we'll do is we'll click auto to fade off my upstream key because we're, we're switching to the same camera. So that's not going to change, but this is going to be included in my next transition. So if I click auto, that logo transitions off. Perfect. Next thing we need to happen is I'm going to change my media player to my lower third. I'm going to turn off key one in my next transition. I don't want that to be ran again. And then I'm going to click auto for my downstream key one, which will transition on my downstream key. Great. So let's end that recording and let's see if it worked. So I'll select in the run section. I'll select startup. I'll play that. Looks good to go. That's what we wanted to happen. And then I'm going to select key switch and press play. And let's watch what happens. The large logo just pops off and the downstream key just kind of is on. Not what we wanted. The only way that I found that this works is one, either create two separate macros, one to bring the large graphic down to turn off the upstream key, and then another one to bring up the, the downstream key. But there is another way if you want to accomplish this with one macro. So I'll show you how. I'll click create. I'll delete the key switch by clicking that button and click delete. And I'm going to run my startup real quick because that's where I want my new next macro to start. All right. So then I'll go to create, click the plus button, I'll call it key switch and click record. Okay. And now just like before, I'm going to fade off my upstream key, checking out my confidence monitor over here to make sure things are going right. And now I'm going to add a pause by clicking this button here. And you have two options for pauses. And right now it's set to user weight. If I turn off user weight, it's a timed pause and it's going to go by minutes and seconds. And from my experience, the timed pause does not work for what I'm trying to do, but it has worked with user weight and user weight means that the user determines how long the pause is. You will tell the macro to continue when you're ready. So I'll click add pause. And now I'm going to, turn off the key in my next transition area. I'm going to change my still to lower third, and then I'll click auto for downstream key. And there's my lower third. So let's end the recording and let's see if this worked. So I'll choose run and I'll select startup and click play. And then that looks correct. I'll choose key switch, click play. The, down, the upstream key fades off. And now you'll notice this orange box in the ATEM software control app and the orange flashing play button. That's letting you know that the app is waiting on you to continue the macro. So then just click play. And now the downstream key comes up. So this is the best workflow I've found when working with one media player, the upstream and downstream keys and switching those graphics. Now, if you have a better workflow or you found a better way to make a macro to do this, please let us know in the comments below and I would love to test that out. The last thing I would like to talk about when it comes to macros is recording very long macros. Now, you saw where only what you click on or change gets recorded in the macro. When you have a, so many controls to click on, it's very easy to make a mistake when creating a macro. And if you're trying to create a really long one and you make a mistake, you have to re-record that entire macro from scratch. So what Blackmagic recommends, and I also recommend, is you make, if you're trying to create a very long automated macro, create a bunch of little short macros and then once you have those all created correctly, then you can create a very large or master macro where your 
just running macros, smaller macros, while you're recording the master. That way, if there is a mistake somewhere, you don't have to re-record that very long one. You can just re-record a short macro to fix it. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Working with macros and the ATEM switcher, it's so much fun and I hope you like it. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.